This is the most Christmas party I've ever been to. Big Brother Reindeer Games is ditching the nice list and going full naughty. The holiday spinoff of Big Brother is way more intense than I thought it would be. I mean, episode three was more blue Christmas than it was holly jolly. I hate all of them! So let's recap Big Brother Reindeer Games episode three, and we'll have a special visitor from the North Pole later on to talk about the season so far. So on Donder, on Blitzen, let's get into it. I'm Anna Rumor, and this is Pop Culture Social Call. We pick up after Cody's elimination, and with such a huge threat out of the game, things are wide open. Taylor and Nicole are thinking a girls' alliance, but when the girls start to notice that Danielle is wheeling and dealing with Xavier, let's just say their alliance seems doomed. We know, we're on to you. It's then that our next Santa's elf enters to shake things up. It's Derek X, who doesn't love him? Well, maybe the players after he introduces this naughty or nice challenge, which has them running around the lodge, unscrambling Christmas cookies to find out why the Christmas crooner's girlfriend dumped him for a two minute head start in the next challenge. Two angry texts and a voicemail that she's dumping me. Yikes. Surprising enough, it's not the singing, it's the clinging that had the crooner's girlfriend packing her stocking. And it's Taylor who solves the riddle. Not only does she get her advantage, she gets to award a disadvantage. And while her number one target is Frankie, she's not his number one target right now, so she gives it to her ally Josh after he volunteers. And honestly, I wonder if Josh regrets that, because the Jingle Bell Brawl is a tough one. Stacking the pieces of this gingerbread man with tweezers is tough enough, and Josh's puzzle key is covered for five whole minutes. It's brutal, just like Nicole's first win. <laughs> Luckily, the second one stuck. Yes, for real, I think! Wait. Nicole now has the power to choose just one person to enter Santa's showdown. The way it works is if they win the time challenge, they have to pick someone else to compete, and that player will have less time. The first person to not complete it, they're packing their Christmas sweaters and heading home. Okay, the strategy is a little tricky here. Do you pick an ally to go first so they have the most time, or do you just pick someone you want to go home? Nicole decides to go with the former, picking her ally Frankie to go first in this snow globe hamster wheel maze puzzle. Frankie knocks it out of the park, but the person he chooses next is going to have one less minute than he did, and that person is Xavier, who doesn't know if Frankie is doing him a solid or wants him to go home. Like, what do you love to, Frankie? X finishes with just seconds left, and it seems like whoever goes next, it's a death sentence in this game. Needless to say, Brittany is not thrilled to be chosen. My head is in the guillotine. Honestly, everyone thinks she's a goner, but amazingly, Brittany kills it. She finishes with a minute and 18 seconds left. It's an emotional moment for everyone. Like I'm crying <laughs> in the candy cane forest. But now Brittany has to choose the next person to go in. And Xavier just told her he put her in because he's trying to keep Danielle safe. So she picks Danielle and Danny is not happy. I'm so... Now, if you've been watching these recaps, you know I'm a Danielle stan. But she can just never get this challenge going, and she ends up being eliminated. You know, not bad for someone that's been out of the game for a long time. More emotional moments. Brittany feels bad she was put in that position in the first place, and Taylor breaks down because Danielle was one of the reasons she even joined Big Brother. My win, Taylor's win, that all started with Danielle. Danny is always a legend, so I was happy she got the $5,000 exit prize even if I'll miss her from the lodge. Now I'm loving Reindeer Games so far, even if Danielle is gone. So we are bringing in our resident big brother enthusiast, Nick Valdez, to talk about it with us. Welcome, Nick. Oh, uh, howdy, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. What a what a game. I I I just just want to say right off the bat, was not expecting to have this much fun. <laughs> Neither was I. I thought this was going to be kind of like filler content, honestly. Yeah. But this is really, really fun. And the gameplay is way more strategic than I would have expected. I thought these players were gonna come in and just kinda hem and haw and have some holiday fun and make some money. But they're here to play. And that's why you bring in these all-stars because they're competitive. They're not gonna let an opportunity to win pass them by. Yeah, now the casting makes so much more sense, right? It's like you have so many winners, you have so many uh, favorite players. And when you see them all interacting with one another, it's like, yes, of course, this is, they're already ready to go. And that's absolutely necessary because things are going by so quickly. Like, yeah. I, I hope this isn't like a one-time deal and we really get this, like, I, this is a yearly thing. I'm having so much fun 
I, I like this format of just all competitions. And if you, you lose the Santa showdown, you go home. Something about it is so clean cut, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. It's, it's, it's so clean cut. And yet they're doing a lot of like strategic yes. movements here, which is great too, because I heard all competitions. I said, great, we'll watch, you know, the big bros win everything. And then we'll say, well, it's over. But not only is there a huge variety of competitions that is very, uh, where is this during the regular season? Um, we're also seeing a lot of strategy from these players in how they move through the challenges. And this gameplay is just great. I'm just really enjoying it. Yeah, it's it's everything we love just distilled and very quick. It's very quick fire. You know, yeah. They are strategizing very quickly. Like uh, with Cam, poor yes. Cam, he's <laughs> the newbie. <laughs> and you know, we lost him the first episode, which unfortunately makes a lot of sense. You know, he was the one standout. They don't know him. And he was uh, unfortunately a threat. And so, but he, he fought hard. That's the thing. I, I kind of hope Cam becomes like a regular, right? Oh. Like this, oh. yeah. <laughs> that, that, was, that came from within me. That was a visceral reaction. <laughs> this is my anti cam bias coming out. I have to say, watching him, you know, he felt so good about himself after his season. He was like, I'm America's favorite player, such a comp beast, whatever. I love last <laughs> season. We, we can all agree that those players were not the best Big Brother players. Seeing him go in against actual good Big Brother players and immediately get eliminated, I was like, and that's a reality check. Yeah, he uh, he got humbled. That's the thing. He absolutely got humbled by Xavier, who is just been at a beast. Just yeah. been like three Santa showdowns and three wins, like to uh, keep escaping. It's so wild over the course of the week. And then the second week too, Cody, Cody who started off so strongly and then all of a sudden go from the top to the bottom and then leave, which is so, so mind blowing. I don't know, things are happening quickly is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> they really are. And, and Cody's exit honestly is what sold me on this spinoff because you know, Cam goes out, easy choice, even mm -hmm. without my anti-Cam bias. Like you said, you don't really have any connections in the house. But Cody is such a big threat. I mean, he won All-Stars. He's an amazing comp beast. Having them have the wherewithal to get him out the second day, I was like, okay, we're playing here. These players are not yes. the kind who are like, oh, it's too early to make a move. I was afraid that was going to happen. Then on day six, they'd be like, oh, wait, we're done with the show. <laughs> so I was happy to see them make that move. And while I definitely enjoyed Cody not knowing what the world word cerebral meant, <laughs> I, I thought it was really, it was very smart of them to, to put him into the elimination. Yeah, and it was so great too, because it was both against Xavier and Frankie Grande, who were also like, really great players. Uh, Frankie Grande, who's suddenly like, took this new format by storm and yeah. who's kind of dominate himself. Like I'm, I've been very surprised to see how quickly he like got adjusted and got moving. I'm also enjoying Josh a lot more than in his original season. It feels like he's like grown up a lot and and relaxed into himself a little bit, which I wasn't expecting. Yeah, it's tough because my mom and sister don't like him on the challenge. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I honestly don't here. either. <laughs> <laughs> it's been tough because he does seem different here. I guess maybe in Big Brother in his own space, like he comes off differently. But uh, yeah, yeah it, I think it's just because everything's so fast, no one's holding back. Everyone's doing what they're best at. And it's so great to see because in the the most recent episode, Brittany with the most like intense Santa showdown ever. Yes. Oh my God. I teared up when she was crying after she made it through. I was like, yeah, why am I crying? Like she said, she's like, I'm crying in a candy game forest. I was like, yeah, that's so true. Why is this game so intense? It's so silly. I was cheering. I know it meant Danielle unfortunately went home and she didn't quite make it but 
I don't know, just seeing Brittany make it through that, I I just, I felt like, I felt relief. <laughs> I know, I know. And I felt bad because Danielle, you know, I stand Danielle and I was so sad yes. to see her go home, but that was all on Xavier. Why did he tell Brittany that? Like he threw I, her under the bus and then Brittany was right to take her out, basically. Yeah, I think that's the thing. It's so fast. This game yeah. is so fast. You, there, there are mistakes. That's what it yeah. is. There are the kind of big mistakes that sent Cody home. The mistakes Xavier probably wouldn't have made if he yeah. had time to actually think about what he was saying. <laughs> Honestly, I think Danielle is going to watch this back and be like, are you kidding me? And I think she's going to be fine with what Brittany did because... Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah. He threw her name out there so easily and Brittany's like, oh, really? Okay, goodbye. I have 20 seconds to make this decision. Um, so yeah. it was sad to see her go, but she got five grand and I'm sure they got paid to be on the show. So glad to see her back. That was just kind of a cool, like cap off to Danielle's journey here. Yeah. I was I was rooting for her. I, want to see, I wanted to see her finally win one, but the, that was fine. Like yeah. she won five thousand. She won in my heart. Like I think it works out. <laughs> now, before we wrap up, I do want to know who your winner is. You know, half we're at the halfway point. What do you think uh, is going to happen in the reindeer games? I'm rooting for Taylor mostly yeah. because I am a big Taylor fan. But Taylor has made some plays that really snuck through, and yeah. I'm. I kind of, I do think she's going to take it all the way to the end. She is a, in a really good spot. She has alliances yeah. with pretty much everyone except for Frankie, and she's not Frankie's number one target. So not a bad place to be. I, now that Danielle is gone, I'm switching focus to Brittany, not only because she took her out, which is an impressive move, uh, but because I forgot how good she is in her diary rooms. Like I knew intellectually, but watching her back on the game, she is just as funny and and charismatic and, and just really fun to watch as she was, uh, you know, like a decade ago. So I <laughs> am loving watching her play. I, I hope she takes home the win. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that either. Like, especially after the last episode we've just seen. Like it's, I. Okay, what a cap on the year, what a cap on the holidays. And Reindeer Games has been so fun. I, I just, that's my thing. I just kind of want to see how this goes and what a finale looks like. Well, we are going to be following all the way through to the finale. So like and subscribe. I'll be recapping the next few episodes and then Nick will be back for the finale. We're going to break it all down with you. Thank you so much for watching. Head over to popculture.com for the latest in entertainment news. And until next time, I'm Anna Rumor with Pop Culture. And I'm Nick Valdez, comicbook.com. Bye, everyone. Uh